For centuries, humanity has dreamed of the stars. And now, the call to become an interplanetary species led by visionaries like Elon Musk feels closer than ever. Mars, the red frontier, a symbol of exploration, survival, and escape. But let's slow down. Let's inject a dose of reality into the fantasy. Because colonizing Mars, it's not a sci-fi movie. It's not a spiritual sequel to the moon landing. It's a one-way ticket to a world without Earth. First, there's the journey. Six to nine months in a pressurized can the size of a small apartment. No showers, minimal privacy, radiation levels high enough to fry a brain tissue. And if something goes wrong, no rescue, no turning back. You thought that 14-hour trip to Asia was grueling. Try nine months. By the time you arrive, if you arrive, you won't feel like Neil Armstrong. You'll feel like a prisoner in orbit. Mars has no air that you can breathe. No running water, no forests, no bird song, no ocean, no smell of rain on the soil. There are no ski resorts, no alpine lodges, no tropical beaches where you can swim, surf, or sail. No national parks carved by glaciers and rivers. No sunsets filtered through the trees. No cozy cafes tucked into cobbled streets. No Venice, no Kyoto, no Serengeti. No art deco theaters or gothic cathedrals. Just radiation and recycled air. Now imagine waking up every single day in this world. A planet-wide quarantine zone with no green, no blue, no life beyond your crew. No serendipity, no jazz in a club, no walks in the rain, no chance encounters. You are a pioneer, but also a prisoner. Cut off from everything that nourishes the human spirit. Mars has no seasons as we know them. No Earth holidays, no bustling city streets, no bookstores to browse, no wildlife to stumble upon. No place to go just to be. Psychologically, this is uncharted territory. Humans evolved in complex ecosystems, not sterile pods. We rely on nature, not just for sustenance, but for meaning, for awe, for grounding. On Mars, depression, isolation, and sensory deprivation aren't risks, they're inevitabilities. And no amount of streaming, virtual reality, or Zoom calls can replace and replicate the real thing. We tell ourselves we need Mars as a backup, as if we can abandon Earth like an old apartment lease. But Earth isn't a location. It's a miracle. It's our home. A living, breathing masterpiece of evolution and time. The idea that we can replicate this with domes, oxygen tanks, and imported potatoes isn't bold. It's delusional. Yes, we should explore. Yes, we should reach for the stars. But let's not pretend that colonizing Mars is progress. It's survival, barely. It's not a new beginning. It's a desperate continuation. Until we can bring rivers, trees, seasons, cultures, and life with us, Mars is not a second home. It's a tomb with Wi-Fi. The future isn't out there. Not yet. The future is here on this fragile, irreplaceable world. Let's not trade paradise for purgatory. Let's fix Earth first, then maybe go to Mars, not to escape, but to share what it means to live.